Hello and welcome to another edition of Sun Dragon Tips and Tricks. I'm Rebecca. I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in downtown Brevard, North Carolina. It's Monday. It's my day off, so I'm coming to you from my house. And I thought today we would talk about something I've been doing a little of that I especially love, and it's cables. I have some videos already from back when I started the channel on basic cables, and I believe I did one on left-leaning and right-leaning cables and how to understand directions for that. So I thought I'd dive into something very specific, either to help you understand the directions or to come up with it on your own and add it to a piece, making braids with cables. Making it look, if I know this is a dark piece that I'm working on right now, but making it look like it is a braid running up your piece. I really love this type of cable. And it involves only working with part of the stitches that are in your total cable. And it can be really fun once you get the hang of it. So let's get to it. So first to go over some of the basics of what we are doing when we talk about a cable braid. A couple of things I thought I would try to define first. And the first one is cabling. When you cable a knitting, you are swapping the place of stitches. You're moving like two and two. You're moving one over the other, either in front or in back. And when we say front and back, we're really talking about what's happening to the first two stitches. Are they going in front of the next two? That will create a left-leaning cable. Or are they going behind the second two? And that will create a right-leaning cable. You can see how that goes. This It looks like there's something left-leaning in front or something right-leaning in front. When the language of cables is used in a pattern, it is talking about swapping the place of stitches on the needle and it makes it look like the stitches are moving over each other in some kind of sinuous fashion. And often that uses a third needle and you hold it to the front or the back of the work. Now, as I mentioned in the introduction, I have some videos, I made them a long time ago. So the quality, who knows what the camera quality is, but I have some videos I made on the basics of understanding cables and how to do a left leaning and right leaning cable already. The next part of this is what, it helps to know what a braid is to make it work. So if you think about a braid like braiding your hair, often that's taking three strands, three different pieces, and you alternate which outside piece gets moved into the center. So I'm gonna see if I have these three, these three pieces right here. If we wanna talk about what happens with a braid, we might say that this piece goes into the center, it crosses with this piece, and then the, so that was the left outside piece, and now the right outside piece is going to swap places with what's in the center, which is this piece that's moved over, so that's gonna come over, and they all kind of move down together. The next, if, the right piece just came into the center. Now we want the left piece to come into the center and it's gonna swap places with what's in the center. And that means next that the right piece gets to go into the center and swap places with what's in the center. And that keeps going. So my braid's getting looser as I go, <laughs> as I try to draw it. But that is every time we move further down, the outside piece goes into the center. Again, so let's, let's review it. We started with the left piece coming into the center and then the right piece came into the center and then the left piece came into the center. Didn't cross all the way over, it just came into the center and swapped with the piece that was in the center. And then again, the right piece comes in and the left piece comes in and it keeps going like that. That's what gives you a braid. Now, here's the difference with knitting. It's kind of flipping it on its head because if you think about braiding hair, you're going top down. This example that I just drew is going top down. 
Think about knitting. We have stitches and we're building fabric up. Knitting is doing the same thing, but it is going bottom up. But the idea is still that we are taking the outside piece and moving it in and the outside piece and moving it in and the outside piece and moving it in. So again, think about it in groups of three and two things are switching places at a time. So the last thing to talk about before we look at how it looks in my drawings and then look at it with real yarn is some basic cable terminology. Now again, these are in the earlier videos that I did. Most patterns, and not all patterns are gonna use the same terminology, but most patterns will use something like this. C4F, it is a cable that uses four stitches And those stitches, a total of four stitches. And the first two stitches are going to be held in front. That's a lot to try to write in there, but I've written here, it is a left leaning cable. Two stitches on the cable needle will be held in front. And this is what it will look like. When you hold them in front and knit them, you will have a left-leaning cable. Now C4B, that is again letting you know that you're about to do a cable. There are four stitches total. Which means two and two that are swapping places. And the first two that you put on a cable needle will be held in back. So it is a right leaning cable. The two stitches on the cable needle are held in the back and that's what it's going to look like. I've got lines to represent two stitches, two lines crossing two lines here. So one crosses this way and one crosses that way. And when you alternate them, you will end up with a braid. And it's always thinking about what is on the outside that you want to move in and how will you make it, how will you create that with your stitches. So let's apply this to a specific number of stitches. I've chosen a six stitch braid cable because it is bigger than just three stitches, but it, we're not talking super huge. Each cable, each step of this braid cable is only going to use two thirds if you think about those three strands, anytime you do a braid, only two of them are swapping places. So the math on that is we're gonna take two thirds of the total stitches. The other third is just gonna be knit. It's just, we're not doing anything to it. If you think about when you braid your hair, two things are switching places and one is just hanging out. So there's four rows that are involved in a braid cable and they just keep repeating. Row one, here's an abbreviation you might see, C4FK2. What we're doing is we are moving the right side, the right third of the stitches to the middle. So again, if we think about this, and I'll show you with yarn in just a minute. If we think about this, the first, if we have all these stitches, we have six stitches hanging out in your needle, we want these two and these two to swap places and we want it to look like the outside two are crossing over. So how we do that is a C4F, which is you take half that number that's in your total. So half of four is two. And we're going to have those two stitches be held to the front. So here are all my pictures that we're gonna move across right now. The cable, is only going to use, we've got six stitches for the entire braid. The cable is only going to use the first four and I'm gonna start color coding things so we can keep track of it. So let me color code. We've got two pink and two orange and two blue. Our first crisscross is only going to use the first four stitches. This is going to do our C4F. 
So first we're just gonna get our bearings and say, okay, the first two stitches, the outside edge needs to cross over into the center and we need those pink stitches to stay in front. So we're going to take the, two, the first two stitches onto a cable needle and hang in front. And that's what I've drawn for B here. I'm only drawing the stitches that are going to be part of the cable. It's nice to have a boundary stitch or two on either side that is a purl that's not a knit that will help this pop. But I'm only concerned right now in the drawings with the stitches that will be part of the cable. So I've drawn a little J hook cable needle because I really do love those because they hang completely out of the way when you knit with them. But here's our picture where I've slid the first two stitches off onto the cable needle and I'm holding it in front. Now, next I'm going to knit the, two, the next two stitches on my regular needle. That is going to be my orange stitches here. When I do that, going to look like the C drawing here, which I've combined a couple of things in this drawing. It is I have knit the two stitches. I'm going to keep everything in this column orange, but I'm going to start coloring in the stitches underneath so we can kind of see where everything's going. I've knit my orange stitches and I'm getting ready without twisting, I'm pulling up my cable needle so I can knit the next two stitches off my cable needle. You definitely don't wanna forget your cable needle stitches are there because that can cause problems later on. The last picture I have jumped ahead to where I've both knit off the cable needle and I've knit the last two stitches. So I'm gonna write that in. And that is the K2 of the C4F K2. So what it means is our stitches are now in a different order. The orange ones are now all the way over on the right, they didn't start there. The pink stitches are in the middle. The only ones that are still in the same place are the blue ones. They will have their turn. Now that was step one. Step two, after every cable row, whether you're knitting it in the round or knitting it flat, after every cable row, I recommend doing what I call a set row. And that often involves knitting your knit stitches and purling your purl stitches. You are just solidifying all the changes you just made. Knit your knits and purl your purls. Now, row three, it's like the braid. We took one side in, now we need to take the other side into the middle. This will often be written as knit two C4B, which crosses different parts of the cable in a different way. One way to think about this is we crossed, if we have our six stitches, we cross the first two on the first row. We need to cross the second two. The middle's still gonna be involved, but these guys don't need to move this time. They went in last time. Now we need these two guys over here to come in. So the first two stitches, we can just knit that knit too. We can do something super easy with that knit too. So let's color code to remember where we are. We have the orange stitches, which have already done their moving to the outside edge. The pink stitches that we did a swap with last time to get them into the center. and our blue stitches that are just hanging out. It is their turn to move. 
So this time, our cable is involving the end two thirds. This is gonna be our C4B. And the reason there is a B instead of an F is, is which stitches we want to look like they're on top. But the first easy thing to do on this row, we just wanna knit two stitches. that's going to look like B. So we're building up our orange edge here. The, at the right edge gets to take a break this time. It's the left edge that we are dealing with. Now here's the important thing to understand how things move. We want the blue stitches to stay on top. If we took the pink stitches off onto a cable needle and held it in front, it would keep moving across the front. We want the pink stitches to go behind the blue stitches. So when we take them onto the cable needle, they need to be held in back, not in front. That is the way we create this optical illusion of the blue stitches miraculously swapping places. So when we take the two stitches onto the cable needle and hold them in back, that is what it's going to look like in C. I've got them on the cable needle and they are in back. So let's take a look. The orange ones we're done with. We have already dealt with them on this row. The pink ones are on the cable needle, which when you hold it in back, you don't really see. Like see the little points hanging down here because it's in back. And the blue guys are ready to be knit. They have, they, we have access to them because we've moved the pink ones out of the way and we're holding them in back. So the next thing to do is to knit the two stitches, the two next stitches on your left needle. When you do that, it will look like picture D here, where I'm getting ready to knit the two off of the cable needle. Our left needle will be free of stitches involved in this braid. So let's see if we can color code how things are going. Our orange guys are still over on the right, but our blue guys are right next to them. That is definitely not how we started. And the blue guys are crossing over what were the middle two stitches. Our pink guys, who started way over on the right originally, now appear to have gone under. But we need to get all the stitches onto the right needle to have this first step complete. So the last step of this row is going to be to knit your two stitches off the cable needle. And again, I've got the drawing here with the cable needle. I'm really big on slide stitches off your left needle with the short end of the cable needle and knit them off the long end. We'll see with real yarn what that looks like. But here is our finished, we've gone through all the cabling we're gonna need to do. Here's how it looks. And so let's see what happened. We've got the pink stitches that started over on the right, have gone over and then they've gone under to end up all the way over on the left. The orange stitches that started in the middle are over on the right. And the blue stitches that started over on the left have crossed over to the middle. All the even rows are set rows, so you can go back to the instructions for row two. That's a set row is knit your knits and purl your purls. And then we start at the beginning again. We just finished 
the left side coming in. So then the right side has to come in, which means going back to the beginning of these instructions. If we look at this colorful example, it means the orange stitches are going to swap, come over the blue ones. And then on our next pass of row three, the pink ones are going to go over the orange ones. It's going to keep flipping. But really, what I'd like you to keep in mind is every, every row you do that has a cable in it, which side moved in last time? Was it the right side or the left side? So you want the other side to move in on your current row. So let's take a look at how that behaves when we have real yarn. So the first thing I want to demonstrate is from the beginning of the whiteboard things about if we were just making a braid, like say braiding your hair, we've got three sections, three equal sections. And we're going to move the outside in. So that was the left side and then it's the right side to the middle. It swaps places with the center. Then we want to move the left side to the middle. And then the right side swaps places with the center. And then the left side swaps places. You might only think about this side, the outside edge coming in, but it is really swapping places with the center. So these two guys, when the right side needs to come in, he swaps places with the center and the left side just stays put. The left side is going to swap places with the center and the right side just stays put. Right side swaps places with the center. He didn't move. Now he needs to swap places and the center comes out. So that is how a braid works, right? When you're braiding hair. And we are just doing the same thing, but remember knitting moves from the bottom up in a way. Like if we turn this around, that is what we've been doing. Now how to replicate that with stitches. We wanna think about each piece of this being an equal number of stitches to the total cable. And we're switch swapping places for two thirds and then two thirds. So here is a sample that I've made and I'm getting my cable needle ready. Cool thing about a cable needle. So here's a few different types of cable needles. We have one with a bend in the middle, a short needle. They, they need to have points at both ends. We have one with a bend in the middle. We have one that just has some, some bigger spots on it. So hopefully when you have things in the center, it won't fall off. You could even do this with a short double point needle. I really like the J hooks, the ones that have a shape to them so the stitches can just hang here and be out of the way. And with a shorter and a longer end, then you can say, I take them off my left needle and then I knit them off the cable needle, off the left needle, off my cable needle. It's a way to keep them from twisting. Now, the other thing with cable needles is as long as they are thinner than the needle you're using to knit with, you should be able to keep things on track. So notice these are all much thinner than the chonky, chonky needles I'm working with. I could use this, this guy for everything basically, except the teeniest, tiniest yarn. I'm gonna use him today because he's a little more visible. So I have set up, I have six stitches. We're gonna do the six stitch cable, just like in my drawing. I have six stitches in the center and then I have three pearls on either side. Those weren't in my drawings, but it's nice to have stitches of a different, kind on the borders to make your cable pop and not blend in with what else is going on. So I purl my first three, move my yarn to the back. Now I think it's easiest to start with doing a cable with your first four stitches. Remember six stitches, if you divide that by three, each strand of this cable is two stitches. So our first cable is going to involve moving the two on the right over to the middle. And we will always want the outside edge to look like it's on top. So the way we're gonna do that is with a cable that's held in the front. If 
we take two stitches off the left needle, put them in the center and hold them to the front because we want these to be the visible stitches. Whatever is in front is going to be visible. I'm gonna knit the next two stitches off my left needle. Then if I just flip this guy straight up and slide towards the longer end, I have not twisted my stitches and I'm going to knit, I'm just kind of holding this other needle back here. I'm gonna knit the two stitches off my cable needle and then I can put him down. He's done for a little while. I'm not done with my cable though. I've got the other strand that doesn't need to do anything on this row. So I'm just going to knit those two. So all I've done, doesn't look like much yet, is cross the right edge into the middle. Finish my row. And if you remember from the whiteboard, I'm knitting flat, so I'm going to turn this around. If you're knitting in a circle, it's the same. You want to have a set row. You don't want a cable again right away. For most patterns, you want to set things in place. So if I see a knit stitch right now, I'm going to knit it. I've got three of those. That's my border edge. I'm going to purl six because that's actually my cable. Since I'm on the wrong side, those are purl stitches. And I'm going to knit three. Now my next right side row where I can see the knit stitches in the center. Let's get to where the cable is. Now on the last row these four stitches switch places. So I don't need to do anything with the right edge. I need to be thinking about the left edge, but we need to think linearly of going across this row. So nothing needs to happen with the first two stitches. That happened last row. So I just knit the first two stitches and these are the ones that we are concerned with. It's the last two thirds and we want the second two to cross over to the middle. So if I did what I did on the last row, if I, now try to hold on to everything here, my big clunky needles. If I took these two stitches, we need to swap them with these two. If I held them in front, they would still be the only ones we'd see. And so it would look like the first two stitches had crossed all the way over. So we don't want that. We want to hold these to the back because we want these two stitches to look like they are crossing over the front into the middle. So the next two stitches are knit off of our left needle. And then again, just flip this guy up. It might be a little tougher to find him in the back and slide the stitches towards the longer end and then knit these two stitches. Now I'm done with my cable needle again. And to have a really good look at what's going on, I'm gonna finish my row. So it may not look like much when we do our first series of this, but this is, we've had the right cross over to the center, and now we've had the left cross over to the center. So I'm gonna do my next set row, and then we'll repeat the process, and we'll start to see how this braid is going to take place. Remember, a set row is to just knit your knits and purl your purls, whether you're in the round or going flat. You're setting things in place. All right, here we are. And if we look at what's the highest twist that just happened, 
it was the left side coming into the center. So what we want to do on this row, we want to bring the right side into the center. So I'll get my border stitches done. And then we'll take a look again. The right side are the first stitches I encounter. So I'm going to be using two thirds, the first two thirds of my cable. And I want the first two stitches to trade places with the center two. And I want the outside ones to look like they're going over the top. So that means getting these first two stitches onto my cable needle. We want these stitches to be in front. So we're going to leave the cable needle hanging in front. We're going to knit the next two stitches. And don't forget about these on your cable needle. Now we're going to knit the two off your cable needle. It's important to try not to twist your cable needle or knit them off the wrong end because it won't look as clean. It'll look like there's something wrong. The last third of the stitches, the last two, they just get knit. Nothing happens to them with a braid. Only two strands, two pieces of it. The third piece just gets to stay where it is. Again, between every cable row, we do a set row. So let me do my set row. Knit my knits and purl my purls. Now I'm on the right side again. And let's get up to the cable and see what's going on. So even if you put this down for a while and come back to it, you can say, okay, here's my braid. What was the, the highest twist? This down here was the last time that the left side came in, but it's not the highest twist that's happened recently. The highest twist, the bulkiest part up here, use the first four stitches. So that means it, that mean, and you can see it here, the right side came in. So that means it's time for the left side to come in. This twist happened last time, which means these two on the edge, they can just stay where they are. Only one third of the stitches, only two. It's already time to cable. So I'm getting my cable needle ready. These two stitches need to be on top. These two stitches, the end two, need to look like they're crossing over like this, which means we want to take the next two stitches. We don't want them in front. We don't want them over the top. We want them in back. So we're going to hang that off the back, knit the next two to make it look like the edge is coming into the center, and then slide to the far end of our cable needle and knit off the cable needle. And then do my border stitches. I hope you can see the start of the braid there. Now we could do a set row and the next time we come back to this, our left side went into the center, so it's time for our right side to go in and keep alternating right left, right, left, and you'll have a really pretty braid. Thanks again for joining us for learning how to do a cable braid. It is one of my favorite stitches. I like cables that go beyond the classic, just one twist. Those are really fun too. This is fun because almost every right side row you're, well, Every, every other row or every right side row, you're doing something fun with it. Instead of having to go five or six rows between cables, it can be a really, really fun thing to add to just about anything. Cables do tighten up your stitch gauge a little bit. So be careful of that if you're just tossing cables into a regular sweater or something like that. Um, one final plug before I do all my usual plugs, we just got new shirts in. Aren't they snazzy? 
from uh, for the, from the shop for Sun Dragon. We have them in a mustard yellow and a um, royal blue. They're both heathered, so they both have a little bit. Uh, they're not just straight and um, flat colors. I think they're really cute and really fun. <laughs> uh, I'm wearing the extra large because I found with the hot press of our logo on it because I have the girls are kind of big. Uh, I had to go up a size for them to be comfortable. I would say if you're above a C cup, you may want to consider going up a size from what you normally get because uh, they're unisex sizes, which really mean they're men's sizes or they're, they're for slen more, not slender, but they're for straighter cut figures than lots of curves. So um, they are available on our online shop or call the shop. I'll try to put a link into the description, but I'm super excited about them. Right now we have them in extra small to 2XL. If uh, we can go bigger than that, I believe, um, not smaller, you'd have to contact us about being on the next pre-order for these shirts. They are $26 and they benefit the shop. So if you've enjoyed these and you're excited about our channel, um, consider getting one, consider, consider supporting us. We're hoping next time we order, um, we order shirts, we'll get Viking ones. We call our customers. Not everyone who, wa who watches this, I know shops with us, but we, um, we affectionately call our customers Vikings because they pillage the shop. So we're looking to get some Viking shirts next. We may also be doing sweatshirts. So let us know if you're more interested in a sweatshirt than a t-shirt. It will. It, I don't think we're gonna do hoodies our first time out. I think there's gonna be crew neck sweatshirts, but we're, I'm still plotting that. Um, we used Brevard screen printing for our shirts and I highly recommend working with them if you would like to get an order of shirts. So please consider subscribing to this channel if you haven't already. We also have some memberships. You'll get your name in the credits for supporting the channel. You can see our tiers if you look at the memberships on this page. We also have patreon.com as a way to support Sundragon. And Patreon it has the fun thing of after three months, you get some swag sent to you from Patreon. We worked with Patreon on. Uh, regardless, thank you for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Comment, ask questions. You can request other videos. If it's in my wheelhouse, I will try. If it's not, sometimes I learn and then try. I, it really, I've got a list and I get around to what I can when I can but I'm really happy to help you keep crafting if that is what I'm doing, I hope. <laughs> so as I always like to say when I leave, may your crafting be filled with joy and confidence. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hey kitty, how's your day been going, huh? Yeah, smile for the camera. That's as smiley as we get.